the diminished scale. Today I'm going to show you my approach to learning a diminished scale as used over a dominant 7 flat 9 chord. Now, a lot of people have learned the system where it's a half step, then a whole step, then a half step, then a whole step. I don't care for that system. Although it gives you the right notes, to me, when you just say half whole, half whole, half whole, you are losing the harmonic identity of each note within that scale and each note within the chord. And so that seems to suggest like they're all the same, right? Half whole, half whole, half whole. But the difference is, when you have the half step between, the, say, the C and the D flat, the first and second note, that's a very different sounding half step than the one that occurs between the sharp nine, say, and the third. That's a D sharp to an E. They're both half steps, but they're totally different sounds. To me, when you're learning it, if you're going to be able to use this scale effectively, then you're going to have to really be able to identify each unique sound. Okay, so it's not just a formula thing, it's hearing each note in the scale as a chord tone, which is the way I think of it. So, here's how we do it, and we're going to build this slowly. We're going to use the basic chord to start with, to give us some kind of starting point. So we're going to go C, E, G, B flat. Okay, C, E, G, B flat, and we're going to go up and down the chord. So let's go. Make sure that you're totally solid with that before moving on, because this does add a lot of notes. Okay, Once you're comfortable with the C7 chord, let's add just one note of the scale. I like to do them one at a time so you really can get the flavor of it. We're going to add the flat 9. It's the first one to add, and it's a D flat. So hang a little longer on the new note. It already sounds exotic. It already sounds nice to me. Okay, that was, you have to experience almost like the taste of it, the taste of the flat nine. That's what the flat nine tastes like. Okay, let's go on to the sharp nine. This is a unique scale in that it has two ninths. It's got a flat nine and a sharp nine. That's very unusual because if you think about other scales, they have one ninth. It's usually a major ninth. Or it might be just a flat nine, but it's not both. This one's got both. So, D sharp, the sharp nine. <laughs> So what did I do there? I added the D sharp. So we had C, it's the root, D flat, that was the flat nine, D sharp, that was the sharp nine. Then I went on to the E, which was the third. Then the fifth was G, the seventh was B flat. All right, excellent. Play that for a while till you're comfortable with that. Then come back and we're going to add the next note, which is the sharp 11. Sharp 11, a really cool note. This is an F sharp. Okay, so get comfortable with that. Play that lots of times. And when you're ready, go on to the next note. Now we're going to add the 13th. 13th of the chord is an A. Okay, so we got the 13th. Only one note left to add. That's the C on the top, the root. So, we've got the entire scale. Root, flat 9, sharp 9, 3rd, sharp 11, 5th, 13, 7, root. That's the diminished scale. So, if I ask you to say, let's start on the sharp 11, it's no problem because you've already gone through that type of training where you're hearing the sharp 11, you added it by itself. Remember when we were at this stage? Now, what if I said, hey, let's start on the seventh, okay? Let's start on the seventh of the chord and go up the scale. So you're going to start on the 7th, a B flat. Okay, and it should be no problem because we've done this step by step. And you're not thinking anymore in terms of half step, whole step, half step, whole step. If you noticed, when we started on the B flat, 
it was a whole step, but when we started on the sharp 11, on the F sharp, it was a half step. So really, I don't even care so much whether it's a whole step or half step. I just need to hear the sound of the chord tone. So the other thing with that half whole thing, it's only true half of the time. The scale actually starts with a half step. If you're starting on the root, if you're starting on the sharp nine, if you're starting on the sharp 11th, or if you're starting on the 13th, it's true, that starts with a half step. But all the other notes, it's gonna start with a whole step. If you're gonna start on the flat nine, it starts with a whole step. Okay, if you're going to start on the third, it starts with a whole step. If you're going to start on the fifth, it starts with a whole step. If you're going to start on the seventh, it starts with a whole step. That's way too much to keep track of. So who wants to keep track of all that when you could just say, okay, it's the root, the flat nine, the sharp nine, the third, the sharp eleven, the fifth, the thirteenth, the seventh, and the root. <laughs> Let it all relate to the original chord, and you will be totally solid on this, okay? Once you do it on C, oh, here's another thing that reminded me. You may have heard, oh, there's only three diminished scales, so it's like free pass, woo, you know, uh, we don't have to do all 12 scales. That's not a good idea. Uh, it's tr To me, that's a little uh, footnote. That's like a little asterisk with a footnote. It's true, they overlap. So the same scale that works for C7 flat 9 will also work for A7 flat 9, and will work for F sharp 7 flat 9, um, and it'll work for E flat 7 flat 9. But that's very confusing, I think, for most people to think like that. So you're better off treating it like there are 12 of them. Even though we know there's only three, go through the process, just like you practice all 12 dominant chords, uh, go through this step-by-step -step process where you add each alteration and each note in the scale one at a time just like we did for all 12 and then you're going to have no problem at all it's going to be totally solid okay so don't do this thing where oh i only have to learn three diminished scales and then i'm all done no you want to do all 12 chords and you want to do all 12 scales so just think of it like that you're going to be much better prepared and it's going to be instant access no matter whether the chords in f sharp 7 with a flat 9 and a sharp 11 or a c7 or an a7 it won't matter. You'll be solid on all of them, okay? And if you need to spread this out over a few days or a few weeks, that's fine. Just keep track of it so that eventually you've hit all 12 and do them in this with this procedure, and you will never forget them, and they'll be part of your ear and part of the way you hear. All right, so have fun with that. That's the system.